In this video we will look at recursion, which is a useful way to tackle many coding challenges. Imagine you are in a queue of people and you wanted to know how many people are in front of you. Now you could walk to the front of the queue and count the people, but here is a better idea. Ask the person in front of you how many people are in front of them. They can ask the same question of the person in front of them, and so on. Eventually the question gets to the person at the front who has nobody to ask. The person at the front replies to the person behind saying there are no people in front of me. So that person knows there is only one person in front of them and they tell the person behind. That person knows there must be two people in front of them so they tell you that. Now you know there are three people in front of you. So how does recursion work? Instead of solving the hard problem like counting the number of people in the queue, it turns into a slightly easier version of the same problem. You ask the person in front. The queue in front of them is one person shorter so they have an easier problem. Eventually the problem is so easy the answer is obvious. The person at the front of the queue doesn't need to ask anyone else. It is obvious there is no one in front of them. We call this the base case. Once we have solved the simplest case, we work backwards to find the answer. In this case, each person in the queue simply adds one to whatever the person in front tells them. Recursion sometimes feels like a cheat. You seem to get the solution without ever having to work it out. In fact, it's just a clever way to solve programming problems. Let's look at factorials, which provide another example of recursion. Here is how factorials are defined. 1 factorial is equal to 1. 2 factorial is equal to 2 times 1. 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1, that is 6. 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. This definition can be extended to find the factorial of any positive whole number. Can we use recursion to calculate factorials? Of course we can. The trick is to notice that 4 factorial, or 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, is actually equal to 4 times 3 factorial. In fact, in every case, n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. We can use this fact to create a factorial function using recursion. In this example, we will use Python code. We declare a function called factorial. It takes the parameter n, which is the number of the factorial we want to calculate. To calculate the factorial, we multiply n by the factorial of n minus 1. This is the recursive part. So let's look at what happens when we calculate 4 factorial. We call the factorial function with a value 4. This function then calculates 4 times the factorial of 3. The factorial function is called again to calculate the factorial of 3. The factorial of 3, as we know, is 3 times the factorial of 2. Now we call the factorial function once again to calculate the factorial of 2. The factorial of 2 is 2 times the factorial of 1. This is very similar to the line of people in the queue. Each time we call the factorial function, it is like asking the next person in the queue. Factorial of 1 is like the end of the queue. We don't need to work the value out. The factorial of 1 is just 1. This is called the base case. Now we can work backwards. We know that the factorial of 1 is 1. So we can work out that the factorial of 2 is 2. The factorial of 3 is 6. Finally, the factorial of 4 is 24. Now let's look again at our factorial function. Something important is missing. If we call the function with n equals 1, it will try to calculate the factorial of 0, and so on forever. We need to make a special case for n equals 1 and simply return 1. This is the base case. That is the complete code for calculating factorials by recursion.